do you remember the exact moment when you knew you were going in that game at Denver last year? And could you have ever predicted it would be the beginning of what your, uh, you know, what, what, what things have started for you now? Yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, coming in on it early in the, in the third quarter. Um, yeah, we had, had a couple conversations on the sideline, but didn't really know if I was going to get the nod or not. And then, um, you know, my number was called and, I was excited, excited to go in and, and play, do what I love doing. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we, we weren't able to, to get really anything going uh, in that game. So, um, you know, definitely a, a bad taste in our mouth from from our performance last year. And, and what's your confidence level, I guess, optimism level at the start of the 2020 season for yourself and maybe for the team? I mean, I'm optimistic. I, I believe in our guys. I believe in, in our program. Um but what we did last year really means nothing at this point. We have to go out and, and play good football. And uh, it doesn't just happen overnight. We're going to have to go out and, and start the season off right, execute, play with, with fundamentals and details, and, uh, you know, play harder than everyone else on the field. So, you know, that's something that we preach from day one. But uh, talking about it really doesn't do anything. We have to go out and actually do it. Uh, Buck? Yeah, thanks for doing this, Ryan. Uh, facing a former teammate in Jarrell Casey, what do you anticipate uh, the greatest challenge with that is going to be? Jarrell's a heck of a player. You know, he's fast, he's quick. Um, he just finds ways to, to be disruptive. And, you know, he loved it when he was on your team. Loved it last year, loved seeing him make plays. But um, going to have to do a good job up front this year of, of handling him. It's going to be a tall task. You know, he's such a talented guy and um, I have so much respect for him. So, uh, definitely a guy that we're going to have to play well against. Uh, John Glennon. Yeah, hey, Ryan. Um, question for you in terms of um, uh, like being kind of a vocal leader and communicating with your receivers. How do you feel like you have changed over the years in that regard? Is that something maybe that you do better now than uh, maybe some of the earlier years in, in Miami? Yeah, I think you're, you're constantly learning and evolve, evolving. Uh, as a player, as a leader, as a man, uh, you know, every experience is a learning experience, whether it's good or bad. So definitely I have learned things over the years and, and um, ways to read situations. I feel like I'm, I'm better at reading situations, reading people, you know, now than I was you know, five, six years ago. And that just comes with time and relationships and um, just knowing people. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a situation where every, every communication, every conversation is going to be a little bit different depending on the person. Um, or what's needed, you know, uh, from the practice or, or rep or, or something like that. But uh, just being able to navigate those situations and, and handle, handle them appropriately to get the best outcome. Can you think of maybe, uh, you know, one uh, experience, in whether in Miami or, or in Tennessee, that, that kind of helped you and helped you grow in that regard? Um, yeah, I mean, there's been situations where um, maybe I was, I was a bit hard on guys uh, rather than uh, – you know, take him to the side and uh, and having a, a quiet conversation with them. And uh, at the end of the day, if you want to be on the same page, you want uh, to come together and be synergistic so that the outcome on Sunday is what you're looking for. And um, just like I said, being able to read those situations and, and handle it appropriately in order to get that best outcome um, is something that, that, uh, that I think I've gotten better at over time. Teresa? Ryan, Mike has mentioned to us a few times that you all didn't score a point in that game in Denver. I'm wondering how many times has it been brought up in offensive meetings? Um, yeah, I mean, we've definitely discussed our performance last year. Obviously, you know, watched the tape again, going back and, um, and preparing for this game. So uh, definitely doesn't feel good to, to go back and see you know, our performance last year. You know, got to give credit to them. They did a heck of a job of uh, – of Corral is containing us, and and we just didn't execute good enough. So uh, it's going to be a challenge this year is to uh, to go out and, and play our, our type of football and, and execute consistently throughout the game. Uh, Gentry? Yeah, hey, Ryan. Um, you know, looking back over your career, the numbers had been relatively consistent, and then there was such a, such a significant jump last season. As you've looked back in the months since then, why do you think that happened and, and did it change your preparation much and, you know, to, to try to sustain or, or improve on that? No, I, I didn't really change my preparation um, to last year. You know, I, I found some consistency that, that gets me prepared for, for each and every game. I feel really good going into the game mentally and physically and, um, 
you know, kind of figured that out a few years ago, what works best for me, and then just kind of carried that through. Um, obviously, transition roles in the middle of last year, which was, was something a little bit different. But as far as, you know, mentally you know, going through the game plan and studying and um, being on the same page with receivers, all that has been pretty consistent for the past several years. So uh, just wanted to keep that rolling. Would you say you would put it more on change of surroundings, probably more than anything you were doing differently? Yeah, no doubt. You know, I, I felt pretty consistent on, on what I was doing. You know, obviously, uh, guys around me were, were playing extremely well, and, and that helps. Uh, Eric? Hey, Ryan, uh, how much can you take uh, from your performance in last year's game in Denver as, as you prepare for Monday or, you know, just with how much has happened in between then and now, you know, does it maybe feel like that game was years ago and you kind of have to approach it more fresh? Well, it does feel like a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Um, in that regard, you know, what happened last year has no effect on, on what happens this year. You know, we have to be able to, to go out and, like I said, play our game, play consistently uh, from start to finish. They're, they're a good defense, good team, uh, solid on defense. They're, they're sound uh, fundamentally. They're sound in, in where they're at and, and not giving you much. So you're going to have to go out and earn it. They're not going to, like I said, give you anything, and it's on us to be able to go execute and make plays. Uh, Paul? Hey, Ryan. Um, I'm wondering, when you hear talk about – Steve McNair and Eddie George and, and the good old days here or of guys who leave their mark on a team anywhere. Um, do, do you like that element of the league, uh, the history and, and the personal legacies? I mean, yeah, I obviously I have a ton of respect for guys who, who played before me and, uh, you know, played at a high level, all the, the hall of fame guys, you know, across the league guys that I grew up watching and, and, um, a fan of, you know, I can remember, you know, watching those guys play when I was younger, you know, growing up in, in middle school. And I'm one of the old guys now, so they probably weren't even born or, or close to it whenever, uh, you know, Steve and Eddie were playing. But, uh, but yeah, I can remember, you know, watching those guys play and, and you know, not just guys here, but guys across the league and, and definitely can appreciate, you know, their legacy and, and the mark that they left on the game. You hope to leave a mark like that? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really think about that often. You know, I think about – you know, just handling the business in front of me. And then I feel like I know that if you're able to do that, if you're able to, uh, to perform and, and go out and get better each week and, and execute at a high level, then that'll take care of itself. Thank you. Uh, Chris Harris. Hey, Ryan. Uh, I was just wondering how efficient do you think this offense can be right out of the gate, given an off season with filled with protocols and uncertainties and things that have been different? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a different off season for us, but Feel like we got a lot of competition in camp, and uh, now it's a matter of of going out and playing clean football. Obviously, haven't got the time that that we normally get, you know, leading up to to a game one, uh, or even the reps that we normally get. But uh, it's all it's an even playing field. You know, every team's dealing with the same uh, limitations, the same uh, parameters they're put on through through COVID. So, uh, you know, there's no excuses. It's it's about going out and and executing and playing good football. We got uh, five uh, people to get to. Uh, let's see if we can roll through these. Uh, Teron. Yeah, hey, what's up, Ryan? Uh, in regards to last year, when when you got the call to to go in, can you remember anything that Coach Rabel or Arthur Smith said to you as, as you, you you know right before you took the field? Uh, no, honestly, I don't remember any um, any uh, specific wording or anything like that. You know, I think. I think back at Arthur just said, you know, let's go. Uh, he probably said something else, but I just remember like, all right, you know, let's go play football. I do what I love doing and then let it rip. Uh, Joe? Hey, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I look back, I think I've got you playing against Jadavia and Clowney one time in your career. You had a pretty big day that, that day as well. Uh, I just wanted to ask you from a quarterback's perspective, what is it like going against them? What What are the challenges? What are the concerns? And, and also, what's your reaction to, you know, you guys landing him here right before the season starts? I'm excited. Excited to have him as part of, part of the team. Uh, like you said, a talented guy, a guy who's, who's really athletic. He's long. Uh, he's a playmaker. You know, going back to his days at, at South Carolina, seeing him, you know, blowing up plays in the backfield. Uh, we, let, we never let Taylor uh, forget that one. But, uh you know, a guy who's, who's made plays his, his whole career. He, like, like I said, he's talented. 
uh, he's a guy you have to account for in game planning. I can remember game planning against him and, and accounting for him in several different ways. So, you know, excited to have him as part of the Titans. Uh, Terry? Ryan, I apologize. Missed the first couple of questions, so apologize if you've already been asked this. But with a guy like Jarrell Casey, who's had so much familiarity with your system and practicing against you every day, do you have to change any cadences or disguise any looks to throw a guy like that off the trail? Yeah, I mean, I have a ton of respect for, for Jarrell and, and not only the, the athleticism he has, but how he mentally approaches the game. So uh, that's something that, that – you know, varies from year to year, changes from year to year, regardless of, of players changing teams. But, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I have a ton of respect for, for Jarrell and, and the mental aspect he brings to the game as well. Uh, Kayla? Hey, Ryan. Um, hope you're doing well. So as we get closer to Monday night football, obviously it's going to be a very different environment, um, which is usually very rowdy at, at mile high. You've, you've been in that, obviously, last year. What's going to be the plan just for keeping the energy up on the sideline um, since there's not going to be anything to take from anywhere else? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we haven't haven't talked about it a whole lot. You know, at the end of the day, it's football. It's played between the lines. You know, the fans are a big part of that in, in normal football, but um, they're not there, and, it, and it's an even playing field. You know, everyone's dealing, like I said, with the same stuff. So um, it's on us to, to go go out and execute. I feel like, you know, when we're executing and playing good football, that brings an energy within itself, and, um, you know, we'll be, we'll be in good shape. So at the end of the day, it's all a matter of, of going out and, uh, you know, doing what we can do. Luke? Brian, I know that all you can do in a single week is focus on winning that game, but when you think about this team and, and the talent you have and the confidence that you've spoken about, how high are your expectations for, for what you're capable of this season? Yeah, like you said, you know, it's cliche, but really um, call me simple-minded, but, but I'm thinking about it one week at a time. How do I win one game and um, how, do, how do we as a team go out and and find a way to execute and, and walk away with Denver from Denver with a win, you know. So, you know, if we're able to do that, you know, we'll be in we'll be in good shape and won't have to worry about, um, you know, what's happening down the line if we're able to take it week by week and and stack wins together.